I've been presenting with PowerPoint for more than 20 years. It's easy to make a presentation in PowerPoint. That's why there are so many bad presentations created with PowerPoint. The key, I think, is to create a presentation that doesn't look like PowerPoint. You see, PowerPoint's not the problem. It's the way we use PowerPoint. If you follow some of these recommendations, your presentations with PowerPoint will be much better than other PowerPoint presentations that you're going to see. What I want you to do is close your eyes and imagine a student coloring with crayons. Once you've got that image in mind, I want you to answer a question. Did you think of a little girl with crayons? Or did you think of a little boy with crayons? I can tell you one thing you did not think of, and that was a clip art little kid with crayons. You see, our brains don't think in clip art. Our brains think in photos. And for that reason, you should never, ever use clip art in your presentations. Now, with one exception, if you can create art, you should use your own art. You can establish a whole style for yourself if you can make your own art for your presentations. I'm not an artist, but I can take pictures. So I took these pictures and I many times use my own pictures in my presentation. So if you can do that, you should have original content in your presentations. Usually the first thing you do when you do a presentation is you pick a theme. If you go into PowerPoint, up at the top of the design tab, you're going to see all of these different options for themes. You should pick a theme that reflects the content of your presentation. Unfortunately, unless you're going to do a presentation on blue wallpaper or a wood grain floor, you're not going to find a theme that matches your content. There should never be anything on the screen that doesn't reflect the idea that you are talking about. So for me, themes are pretty much out. There is one thing under the design tab that you should change. Every projector in our district is a widescreen projector. So all of your presentations, the slide size should be widescreen. This is important because a standard screen, one that's four by three, like an old television, shows a smaller version of whatever graphic that you decide to put on there. Notice you can see half of the girl on the right edge of this picture. But if I change this to widescreen, I can see not only the other half of the girl, but another person, a couple of coffee machines, and a back door. So widescreen will let you put more information on the screen and it'll fit the screens that you're going to use to project. Now I said that I don't use themes. What I use is a black background and a sans serif font. And I can go into the master slide and set those things up so that all of my slides uh, look the same way. For a font, usually I use Tahoma. It's, it's very legible. It's easy to see from the back of the room. This is a sans serif font. Now, a sans serif font means it doesn't have that sans. It doesn't have serifs. A serif, like a serif font, Times New Roman, a serif is the little feet that stick out on each one of the letters. Serif fonts are better for large quantities of text. If you want to read all the way across the screen, your eye can track the serifs better. So because of this, a lot of books are written with a, a serif font. You should never ever have this much text on a slide if the content of the text is important. You'll end up reading it and that will be awful for your presentation. When it comes to graphics, the shape of the graphic is important. Answer this question. What shape would you use to describe these coins? This isn't a trick question. I, I'm looking for you to say a circle or round. Now answer the same question about these coins. See, I've, I've complicated it by using white squares with round coins on a black background. I could make this an easier question to answer if I just changed the background to white. Or I could remove the background on the coins, put it back on my black background, 
and you can see that these are once again circles. The way I remove the background is using a tool in the Format tab of PowerPoint. There's a little thing called Remove Background. You can see the, the coin here with the background in it. Once I click on this tool, PowerPoint will try to automatically figure out what I'm trying to remove. You can see it's not perfect, but there's a little tool that lets me choose which areas that I add or subtract. And within a few seconds, I was able to make all of the coins look round instead of round on a white square. For transitions, I use two. For the first 20 years of presenting, I used one. I've only added another transition in the last year. Most of the time, I use a transition that lets me easily go from slide to slide, and things automatically fade from slide to slide. This is called the fade transition. But last year, there was a transition that was added to Office 365 that does some incredible things. It lets you move an object, and when you move it, you can also resize it, and you can very easily make the final result exactly what you want it to be. It lets me do something like this. I can take a big picture, resize it all the way down to a standard screen, and then move it over to a widescreen at the same time that I make it wider. This is called the Morph Transition, and it's only available in Office 365. Fortunately, Office 365 is the version of Office that's installed on all of your computers. Morph lets me show you how I made the student on the right a little bit darker than the student on the left. What I did is I took a semi-transparent a rectangle and I placed that rectangle on top of the picture. I did this so that whenever text goes on top of these two pictures, I created some contrast so it's easier to read. Let me go through five things that will make every one of your presentations better. The first one I already talked about, no clip art. Unless you create that clip art. If you have a hard time finding photos, you can always go out to Flickr. There are millions of photos uploaded to Flickr every single day, so you will have no problem finding content for anything that you want to talk. The second item is contrast. Contrast is the value difference between the text and the background. You want there to be a large difference in those values so that you can easily read text, even if it's on top of a picture. If I have white letters on a black background, this is incredible contrast. The same is if I have black letters on a white background. The problem with either one of these is they're boring. If I can incorporate photos into my presentation of the, the text, it will make it easier for the audience to remember whatever the text happens to be. Now, I have a black background around these photos. I also have that semi-transparent black rectangle to give me more contrast. Notice I can read this pretty well. If I remove that uh, rectangle, it becomes a little bit hard to read, especially over on the left where I have that white piece of paper with white text on it. Now, if I were to put these pictures on top of a white background, then I start losing content. I lost the first letter and only, and I have Office 36 instead of Office 365. If you have text and a photograph, which I recommend, make sure you have good contrast between the two. I even use this little trick on this uh, slide by putting the rectangle, the slightly transparent rectangle, in between this painting and my text so you could read it a little more easily. The next thing in a good presentation is repetition. You've seen these two pictures more than a dozen times already. The idea I had with these two pictures was to use pictures, not clip art. By showing these pictures over and over, I make that idea stick with you the fourth item is alignment. Alignment means when I go from slide to slide to slide, 
if there is an object that is on each one of those slides, it should never move. It should always be aligned in the same place on each slide. The fifth thing is proximity. Proximity means if two things go together, they should be close. So I had rectangles with words on them. And when I move the rectangles, notice the words stick close to the rectangles that they go with. So these five things are actually fairly easy to remember. If uh, we reduce a little bit just to the key words and just remember no crap, no crap in your presentation and your presentation will be really great. If you have content you want people to take with them, which you should always have something for people to take with them, you should share a document with everyone who attends your presentation. The easiest way to do that nowadays is through something like a Google Doc. And in your presentation, you can actually give everyone the URL to the Google Doc that you've shared. Do not give them something like this that's going to have 50 or 100 characters that they have to write down. Use a URL shortener and give them something like this. This happens to be the exact same URL, but I've changed the letters to something that you can easily remember. So if you follow these presentation tips, you can make a presentation that doesn't look like PowerPoint. That'll be a great presentation.